Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back here to On Texas Football. I'm Lifetime Longhorn Rod Davis, joined by fellow Lifetime Longhorn, the young prodigy C.J. Vogel. We're here as bye week for the Longhorns, and we're going to get into our mid-season predictions for the national awards, for the All-Americans the Longhorns may have on their roster, as well as the All-SEC potential uh, players that the Longhorns uh, may have on their roster. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, uh, our uh, segment here is brought to you by our good friends over at MyBookie. Uh, they're uh, great. Got MyBookie.ag is where you need to go check them out. Make sure you're in the game with my friends at MyBookie. Play any matchup, hundreds of college player props, and more at MyBookie.ag. And we'll give you some more details about that in just a second uh but cj let's start out uh and start out with our kind of national awards and kind of work our way back with some of the all sec teams because i figure there'll be fewer longhorns that'll be at least in contention for the national awards so let's start there uh there are a couple of them that i think that the longhorns will have at least some candidates and at least some players who will be in the running for these national awards as we get down to the wire here uh there's no doubt right now the thorpe award seems to be the most likely award for the Longhorns to have a finalist uh, in terms of a national award because Jade Barron is having one hell of a season. He's a semifinalist right now for the Thorpe Award, giving out to the best defensive back in college football. Uh, but I've heard you talk about it. You think it's almost a, you know, a foregone conclusion that he will be a finalist. Yeah, I, I do. You know, he's been tremendous and he's he's done it on the biggest stage so far this year. Right. You know, so far he's got three picks. He's got six PBUs. He's he's not allowed a, a touchdown. And he's a guy that's just been in the right place, making the right play uh, basically this entire season. He's done it. Rod, and I think you mentioned this before the year. If you're Texas marketing, the Texas football department, and you were wanting to promote Jada Barron, how you do it, it's versatility. Yep. He hasn't been asked to do that a whole lot this year, but. We did see him against Vanderbilt take some snaps at safety. We did see him move into the box at times already this year as well. But what he's done at cornerback for really his first year at Texas has been tremendous. And uh, it was kind of that recipe for Quinn Ewers and the Heisman that we talked about before the year too. When you play big time games, how do you perform? Because that's when the whole country is watching you. Well, Jade certainly took that recipe and said, yeah, let me start cooking a little bit. Two picks against Carson Beck under the lights in prime time against Georgia. Could have had a third. Really, really strong performance. And again, he's been as locked down as you could hope for. For a first-time starting cornerback, it's been mad impressive. And right now, I think he's a, a shoe in to be a finalist for the award at the end of the year. I'm with you. He, just, he actually has a good chance to win it. Pro Football Focus actually gave out their midseason national awards, and they gave him the Thorpe. Uh, and it will be, you know, the Thorpe goes to the best DB, so there will be some safeties in that conversation. Uh, you've brought up Jalen Catalan. Uh, who's actually having a great year. And it'll be crazy to think that two finalists potentially uh, could have played in the Texas secondary in 2023. And also, uh, you know, Travis Hunter is going to be, I, I assume Travis Hunter has got to be there too. Yeah. If they give it to Travis Hunter, I also would not complain, even though I think Jade Barron has a really good case for it. So yeah, Jade Barron, I'm with you. I think uh, Jade Barron, has the best chance to be a finalist, if not win a national award uh, for what he's done so far this year. And not only the most versatile defensive back, I just think his football IQ is through the roof. Um, I think he's he, 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 he something that he champions and actually has a lot of pride in. He's talked about how he wants to be a defensive coordinator when he's done with the game. Um, and I'm glad all that uh, work is, pr- is paying off for my man today, Baron. Let's talk about another p- potential national award winner. This is a very uh, underrated uh, kind of underheralded award, if you will, but uh, Bur- the Burlesworth Trophy. I don't know if you've heard of this. This goes to the best player who started his career as a walk-on. Uh, and I think Michael Taft should have at least. I think he should be in the running for this. I, I haven't. I, I haven't heard a. I don't even know if there's a a, a semifinalist list for it or a finalist. I, I'm not gonna lie. I have no idea. All right. Uh, but because I had, I just, I just found out about the Burlesworth Trophy just doing some research for this segment best player who started their career as a walk-on. And that's tough research to do, by the way. Like It ain't easy to do the research on who started their career as a walk-on. But I'll just throw it out there because of the way Taft, my Taft daddy has performed, Michael Taft, and coming off his best game, I think, of his career on the road versus Vanderbilt, having a forced fumble and also having an interception. Uh, he had a PBU. Uh, he broke up in the, in the red zone. I mean, he was in the end zone, actually. He was fantastic. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like he should be in the running for this, this Burl's World Trophy. I, if there's a walk-on in the country playing better, a former walk-on playing better than Michael Taft, 
There can't be many. He's definitely got to be in the be top many. four or five, right? Yeah, no, I, I'm with you 100%. Again, and it's more so to what he means for the University of Texas, right? And that yep. defense specifically, the way that he's kind of become the voice, you know, you can talk about Anthony Hill, obviously Jody Barron, a big piece of that, Barron Sorrell. These guys are great leaders, right? And Texas fortunate to have them all. I don't know if there's a guy right now that kind of brings everything together more than Michael Taft. So you could bring that into the conversation as well. But his on-field play, specifically what we saw against Vanderbilt, he, he's kind of earned his right to become a game-breaker, right? Yeah. You need those guys defensively. Anthony Hill, one of them. Jody Barron, another. Offensively, you got Isaiah Bond. You got Quinn Ewers at times whenever he wants to turn it on. Those are game-breakers. Michael Taft's kind of played his way into that, right? Uh, he, he played well against Oklahoma. He had a couple moments against Georgia. Listen, I'm with you, Rod. I don't, I don't know. I, I can't think of four, five walk-ons across the country playing better than him right now. Not at this level with a top 10 team, one loss, and you know, kind of being one of those big focal points yep. for maybe the best defense in all the country. Michael Taft deserves all of his flowers right now. Yeah, that's I, I don't know. Like I said, I, I know a lot of people don't talk about that award, but man, he should be a finalist for it. Like I said, I don't mean don't know how many finalists they have, but he should be in that conversation. There's also uh, and I don't know how many Longhorns or if a Longhorn would be in the the, the final running for this because it's actually been a really good year for freshmen. There's a Sean Alexander Freshman of the Year award. That's mm-hmm. also a, a national award. Do we think a Colin Simmons or a Ryan Wingo? I thought Ryan Wingo would have a breakout performance last game. Because of the injury to Isaiah Bond, turns out it was DeAndre Moore took advantage of that extra opportunities with those extra targets. Uh, if it's Ryan Ringo or Colin Simmons, you think it would be a, a finalist for the Sean Alexander Freshman of the Year award, potentially? It could be. You know, Colin Simmons probably has the best chance. He's got four and a half sacks. He'd need to turn it on in these final four games. If you can get up to anywhere seven or eight, I think you would have a chance. It's a tough slate. It's uphill sled 100% because look at what Jeremiah Smith's doing at Oklahoma or at Ohio State, excuse me. Look yeah. what Ryan Williams is doing Ryan at Williams. Alabama. Yeah. You know, that, that's probably the two man race at the moment for what those two guys have done already this year. But, you know, if there is a guy that can make some noise for Texas, it's probably the, the freshman edge rusher out of Duncanville who's already got four sacks. So you can find your way into that conversation by playing well. Again, Arkansas on the road, Texas AM on the road. You got some opportunities here. Uh, but it, it's up to Colin to kind of become that next vocal piece uh, or, or, you know, really instrumental piece when it yeah. comes to that Texas defense off the edge. Yeah, uh, they're definitely going to need him to turn it on late here in the season. Uh, Ryan Wingo as well, going to need both of those guys. Um, how about the next one here? Remington Award, giving out to the best center nationally. Jake Majors got some love from the uh, Remington Award uh, watch committee earlier in the season. Uh, he was obviously given a lot of praise for his performance versus Michigan. Uh, was I believe they was SEC Offensive Lineman of the Year. I'm uh, sorry, of the week, excuse me. He wishes yep. maybe of the year, but of the week uh, after that Michigan game. Is it possible Jake Majors, who's probably one of the most uh, underappreciated Longhorns in the uh, within the Longhorn fandom, uh, is he a possible finalist for the Remington Award given out to the nation's best center? Yeah, it certainly helps that he started that train early, right? That Michigan game against Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant, he comes away with the SEC type, uh, that SEC honor of Offensive Lineman of the Week. That's huge because what do you see whenever you reflect on it three months after it occurs? Wow, he was dominant against two future first-rounders. That's right. That's big. You know, that, mm-hmm. that plays well. Now, of course, there's some speed bumps. We saw it against uh, Georgia. We saw it a little bit against Vanderbilt, and I hope – it doesn't become one of those things where the deficiencies of the pass blocking and the run blocking unit as a whole affects that of just the singular Jake majors here. Yep. But that unit would certainly help kind of promote Jake more. So if that whole unit kind of returns to what we saw at the beginning of the year, but Jake has been tremendous this year. No doubt about that. Yeah, no, he has been, he has been great. Uh, And I think he could be in that conversation. Um, are there any other awards that you thought a Longhorn could be, you know, in the running for, potentially a finalist for? Are there any other national awards that you thought the Longhorns could contend for? Yeah, nothing on the offensive side of the ball. I think that's uh, kind of been out the yeah. window for about four weeks now. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, right, you know, Quinn's injury kind of threw a wrench in his play. The offensive line has taken a step back. Georgia, I think, humbled a lot of folks on that offensive side of the ball. We haven't seen that breakout number one wide receiver. 
you know, yeah. statistically at least. Uh, but I do think there's an outside chance for Anthony Hill to make some noise in the Ooh, Buc- I like Talk it. Talk about game breakers. He did it yeah. against Oklahoma. He was the best player on the field in Dallas. Uh, again, the way that he flies, he almost had an interception against uh, Vanderbilt as well. If he continues to play at the level he's playing right now, I think he's certainly in, in the conversation to be a semifinalist and potential finalist for the Buckets Award, one that Jalen Ford made some noise in not too long ago. That's a that's a good one. Uh, one that I'm thinking about that is kind of weird, and I don't even know why this is the case, but the the Outland Trophy is given to the best interior offensive uh, interior lineman, but they yeah. also now add tackles to it. Um, this is I don't know. It's not a weird trophy, thing. right? Yeah, I mean, so we, I don't know, know why they started to put they should give tackles their own thing, but they put tackles on that list too. Is it possible Kelvin Banks uh can make that the finalist uh yeah. be a finalist for that one? I think that's something we should mention as well. Um, because I it is weird, but the Allen Trophy does honor tackles and Kelvin Banks is one of the best in the country. All right, let's go to all Americans. Let's make our way to the all Americans right now. How many all Americans do you think along with we're talking about are we talking about this first team here? Because we go into third team and second team. You know, hey, Rod B was one of them. Are we just talking about guys <laughs> first team? Are we talking about all the All-Americans they may have here? Let's get into it. Kelvin Banks, you got to start the list there. You know, no and, just and you it. mentioned it with uh, the R- Remington Award trophy. I don't know if there's a tackle in the country playing better than him right now, of course. You know, and there was a hiccup or two against Georgia, and you, you rewatch the tape, and you could probably pin it on Quinn being too deep or the ball not coming out quick enough, whatever. Aside from that, there's not been a moment that you've looked at and watched the tape and said, Ew, Kelvin Banks got beat there. It, it just hasn't happened. It hasn't happened for three years since he's been at Texas Longhorn. Uh, he will be the first offensive tackle taken off the board next year's NFL draft. And, Rod, I, I certainly think he's a shoe in to be a first-team All-American unless something drastic happens to his performance or an injury occurs, knock on wood, right? But he is the best tackle in college football right now. Yeah, no, I'm with you on any. He, he's been and it's, the crazy part about it. This guy's been one of the top three best players on the Texas team since he was a true freshman. I mean, it. Yep, I mean, like that is on field, and he got right. tested immediately too. Rod, four first yeah. rounders in his first yep. year. Yep, exactly. And he, and he, yeah, no, he, from the jump, he has been. I mean, you looked at him and you thought, I think this guy's gonna be a first round pick, and it's rare to see somebody from their true freshman year and think. First round pick. I think yeah. we all thought that when we saw Bijan. He's our first round pick. There's some guys that give off that vibe early on. He's he was one of them dudes, uh, and he has met expectations, exceeded expectations, I should say. Uh, so I'm with you on that. Uh, I'll go Jade Barron. I mean, there's no doubt we just talked about him potentially being a finalist uh, for the Thorpe Award. But Jade Barron, I think he's one of those guys. Also, they're talking about being a first team All American. He will be in that conversation as well. There is no doubt he's been great this year. Um, and I also think, you know, he'll, he'll be given some props as an All-American. I don't know exactly, you know, I mean, how many corners and safeties they're going to put on there, about it up, but he'll be one of those guys. Um, anybody else you're thinking? If we go freshman All-Americans, I'll go Colin Simmons or Ryan Wingo. Yeah, and Colin Simmons again. Yeah, I, I still think Ryan Wingo needs to show more, and that yeah. starts with the quarterback, starts with protection, because we know how good he is. They, what was the – through about six games, Rod, his touch – Yards per yeah. touch was about 30 yards almost. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of those instances where everybody like us are sitting back at home watching the game saying, well, maybe give him the ball more, you know? <laughs> but volume's yeah. going to hold him back against uh, uh, Jeremiah Smith and Ryan Williams. No, you're right about that. And wide receivers is one of those positions now. You're starting to see a lot of productivity from freshman wide receivers. Yes. Well, Xavier Worthy as a freshman put up ridiculous, crazy numbers uh, compared to what Ryan Wingo is doing. It's impressive, but a lot of guys are also prolific. As well as impressive there. All right, uh, we'll get into the uh, all all SEC. What we think are all SEC selections potentially for the Longhorns. But first, let me tell you about our friends over at My Bookie. Uh, with all the excitement of this season, make sure you're in the game with My Bookie. Bet any matchup, hundreds of college player props, and take advantage of weekly risk free bets. The best part is you can do it all anytime, anywhere, straight from your phone. Visit mybookie.ag and use the promo code on Texas to get started. It's really easy and really simple. And it's my bookie's 10 year anniversary and they're rolling out the red carpet for each and every one of you. You can bet big and bet confidently with risk-free Thursdays. If your boosted bet doesn't hit, you'll get your money back weekly. 
uh, no sweat, win-win bets all season long. And if you sign up right now using the code on Texas, you'll cash in on a double deposit bonus. It's a no-brainer, folks. Double the cash in your account before you even place your first bet with my bookie. But don't wait. It's only for a limited time only. For those of you who have been betting with my bookie for quite a while, they've got something special for you as well. A brand new loyalty reward program in my bookie plus. It's simple. The more you play, the more you earn. As you progress through the tiers, you can unlock exclusive promotions, epic giveaways, and and cash back in your account. That's mybookie.ag and mybookie plus. And thanks to them for sponsoring our uh, breakdown here of uh, mid-season award winners for the Longhorns. All right, uh, let's talk SEC. All SEC selections potentially before we get out of here, CJ. Now I think this actually we may have a lot more guys to discuss. All SEC selections. Who would you throw out there? Obviously, uh, as your first or at least the most likely selections to make all SEC this year for the Longhorns. Yeah, I think, you know, it's going to be a lot of the same regurgitated names we just mentioned, right? I think Jada Barron's in contention, Anthony oh. Hill. Uh, I think you could could have made the argument had he'd stayed healthy. Andrew Mokubo was playing his way into that way as well, at least to be recognized yeah. on a second or third team. But, but, Rod, is it crazy to say that both Texas and tier defensive linemen are going to find their way onto this list? I, I put I circled Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton here. I circled them both. I think, I think only one of them will get it. That's fair. But I'm with you. I think I think it's it's possible. Yes, it's possible. It, it, it's remarkable, really, to be sitting here after two years ago. Keandre Coburn and Moro Ojimo get drafted. Then it's like, okay, can Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy step up and be the group? Exactly. Like, okay, they turn into the best group, the best yeah. duo <laughs> in the country. And now you're seeing a very similar level of play with Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton when Texas went out and added three guys from the portal and you're sitting around thinking maybe they don't believe in them, right? Maybe that's just not the two or three guys that they hope to see on the field because they needed so many extra pieces. They shut up everybody. And right now, Vernon Broughton and Alfred Collins, you could both make the case, you know, that they could or should be deserving of uh, an SEC, you know, selection somehow some way so I think that's huge there the other name I wanted to mention Gunnar Helm on the offensive side of the ball leading the, the Longhorns in receiving yards 419 he's second in the SEC uh, for tight ends and in, in receiving yards he's been tremendous and he's certainly eclipsed what many folks expected after the departure of Jatavian Sanders from a year ago as well yep no I'm with you I had uh, Gunnar Helm circled on here I think him and uh, Stowers actually the uh, young kid from Vanderbilt I think both of them will kind of be fighting it out for that first team all SEC selection. Love what you said about the interior D line though, between Alfred Collins and Vernon Bryant. What a you know kind of lineage that the Longhorns are starting to build here with their interior D line. Yeah. Uh, that, it is something special. And you know somebody else I threw out here, Jake Majors, who we mentioned. I think he's got a shot. Uh, I haven't really looked at all of the SEC selection. I feel bad for Malik Muhammad actually in this situation because I think he's played to an all SEC caliber level, but I don't know if he's going to, Jade Barron has, has obviously overshadowed that. And I think deservedly so, because he's a veteran and been there for a while and has proven himself and been more of a proven commodity. But Malik Muhammad has played re- at a really high level. I think in the second, third team selections of all SEC, I think you'll see Malik Muhammad uh, mentioned there as well. On, 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 on the topic of Malik Muhammad, Rod, I mean, it's been such a quiet year for him. <laughs> well, that's exactly what you want from a cornerback. You don't exactly. ever want to hear your cornerback's name unless it's interceptions. Well, when you're yeah. not getting targeted, and Manny hasn't really been targeted a whole lot this year, you don't have many opportunities. So, to your point, you know the quietness of his game is actually speaking to how well he's been playing this year. Yeah, no, it's a great. I feel bad for him because he is locking it down. I had, I'm not going to compare myself to Malik Muhammad, but I remember having good years like that. But I was opposite of Nathan Basher opposite of Quentin Jammer. And it was like, well, that other guy is pretty good too. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's kind of how I feel about Malik Muhammad. It's like, you no, know, he's really good. He's an NFL caliber corner, but he's probably playing across from a Thorpe Award finalist. So, you know what I mean? That you got your levels of appreciation, but I agree with you on that, no doubt about it. So I think those are the guys uh, that I think are worthy of being kind of all SEC selections. Uh, you know, I, I think there's some other guys who are worthy of it, but, because the SEC is such a loaded kind of like you have a really good edge room, but there's so many good edge rushers in the SEC. They, you know, guys like Baron Sorrell and they're not going to get a lot of love, uh, your yeah. edge rushers at Texas, but you're a really deep group. Might be the deeper, deepest group 
uh, in the SEC. All right, that is our mid-season award show. Thank you, CJ, for the knowledge. Really appreciate that. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you to my bookie as well for sponsoring my bookie.ag for sponsoring our uh, our mid-season award show here on On Texas Football. Uh, and of course, we'll be back next week with your actual preview of your upcoming opponent, the Florida Gators. But until next time, for CJ Vogel and for our friends at my bookie, thank you guys for joining us and hook them horns.